Right, hello there. I thought I'd do something different today rather than just showing video clips uh, of old retro games. Um, I thought I'd just add a few tips and tricks that I've learnt whilst dealing with or using Rocket Launcher with Hyperspin. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of links below of the websites for both Rocket Launcher and Hyperspin. Just to explain, I mean it's nothing new, but Hyperspin has been around a long time. It's basically a front end. It makes all your games or your game collection look pretty in wheels that you spin around and you can go into sub wheels and you've got video clips and images of box art and discs and cartridges and all that sort of thing. Rocket Launcher is what I describe as the back end of the front end. It just basically connects between the emulators and the ROMs, gets them working through to Hyperspin. I've got version... Uh, 1.0.1.10 um, and, and that works fine. Right, so if we get into it, this is my rocket launcher setup. Um, um, this is my, I think, 13 terabyte setup. It's on my laptop. I've got a bigger setup on my gaming PC, uh, which is a 48 terabyte, uh, but this has most of what you need. Um, so on the left hand side, you've got the lists of your systems and um, you just scroll down you can see them there just a basic idea I mean say for example we're going to Dreamcast um, to find out the list of the games you've got the games tab up here press this blue arrow it's found almost all but two uh, I think there's some Japanese ones that I need to fill in but 327 out of 329 ROMs so I mean that's that's easy and the other thing is with the uh, the ROM paths if you've got ROMs over various drives or different folders, you can add more than one path. It doesn't have to be one. Um, and on this occasion, obviously, there's two that are incorrect, but that one is correct, and that's got all the ones I've got. It tells you the default emulator, which is Red Dream. Um, if you wanted to change that, you just press this search button over here, and you've got these options here. Uh, RetroArch, I think, works okay, uh, but Red Dream's pretty good. Another minor tip that I've picked up um, is the how to exit from the game Fr from hyperspin because quite often the default position is that the escape button on your keyboard will uh, come out of the game and take you back to the the wheel list within hyperspin and that's fine for most systems but what I find with uh, particularly like the Commodore 64 um, the you have to press the run stop key to start games within the emulator um, and the run stop key is the escape key so if you try and press escape you, you st instead of starting the game you come out of the game so what you can do um, you can change the key to use to get out of the game for certain or for anything you want but particularly Commodore 64 so here you'd go into the settings tab second from the left and under the controls bit here you have got the exit emulator key I've already got mine set up as E rather than escape but to change it you just go into this bit here um, and then just basically press plus there and then you get to choose whatever one you want press save there and come back out of it and then that's now solved so you won't have that issue with particularly the Commodore 64 I'm not sure if there are other systems they might well be but if anything interferes at least you've got that option uh, to stop you from coming out of the game when you want to actually play it another basic thing is um, sometimes you might have issues if you're trying to set it up rocket launcher with hyperspin that it just doesn't work one of the main things is that it's very basic is that you haven't told rocket launcher which front end you're using what a what to link with so here you'd go into the rocket launcher UI tab at the end here go into the subfolder front ends and then I mean I've only got the two listed here but sometimes you might have um, launch box um, ticked or unticked and as you can see Hyperspin is ticked, so it knows that's the front end, so it will connect with it and work. Another important tab is the emulator tab here. Um, you press this arrow here to go back to the global settings, and here are all the lists of the emulators. I've got a few with some exclamation marks, basically. This is just a newish one I've set up recently, and I need to check the paths to the emulators. But they're all listed here. Um, if you wanted to add an emulator, you just press this cross here. And then basically, you would just put the name of the emulator um, and the path of where it is or where the extension is, the ROM extensions. And here it's important that you put all the, the ROMs down, say zip. And then you have to use this 
to separate them. I can't. I don't know what that's called actually, but that line, the um, vertical line, and then you just carry on like ZZ, 7Z, um, etc., and then you just carry on. And so basically, it picks up and it's looking for all those ROM extensions because quite often with um, the retro systems, you'll have um, different sorts of extensions for discs, cassettes, and tapes, and you want to make sure they're all picked up. The module should pre-populate, and you just choose that, and that's all. You can ignore these other things. You don't really need to get into that. Sometimes it might be helpful to update Rocket Launcher, because um, I'm not sure if it's been actively working on much, but there are sometimes updated modules. Um, and here all you do is you go into the Rocket Launcher UI tab, into the settings, and you go down here, check for updates, there are no new updates. Do you want to force it to check for new updates? Yes, please. And then go down here, check updates, and it then does this loading bar white checks. There you go. Five files that need to be updated. OK. Apply updates. And you want to proceed? Yes. Can't do any harm. And then you want to install them. Update complete. It's all done. So that's fine. So I'm updated. Another important aspect with using Rocket Launcher or in Hyperspin, with the media in particular, is that the um, the games, the name on each game has to match exactly what's in the media, otherwise it won't connect, and that that is exact. I mean, uh, right up until the file extension, anything before that has to match exactly. If you want to add a system. Again, you go over here on the left-hand side where all your systems are. You press the cross. And here, you just put the name of the system. It has to be exact with uh, what the modules say. And I'll show you the modules in a little bit. So you put the name in there, and then you'll choose whereabouts you want it to go in the whole system. So, for example, I'm going to add sharp x1 so now this system's in alphabetical order so I will now put this I'll put it before that one there choose next emulator well I know for sharp it's x millennium so you go down the list here next and you have to choose the ROM path Now, I think I've got mine saved somewhere under the gaming tab. So here we go. I think they're under the, there's a specified path, is the Hyperspin ROMs Seagate Sharp X1 ROMs. Press OK. Next, and then you choose generate database from your ROM path. So basically, you've pointed it to the ROMs, and this will generate the database based on what you're pointing it to. So you check that, click Next. Finish, yes please, wait for it to finish. System was successfully created, 365 games were found using these particular extensions, 2D, D88, 7Z and Zip. Press OK and that should appear on the left hand side. Uh, we go down and find it, there it is. Go into games, press the blue arrow. And there we go, 365. And I'll check it by going into Hyperspin itself. As you can see, I haven't got wheel art for everything, but um, most of it's there and it works nicely. 
I hope that has been of some use to you.